Hi everyone and welcome to a new series of videos. Today I am going to be starting the first lesson around um, AS91390, demonstrate understanding of thermochemical principles and the properties of particles and substances. Now this is a five credit external standard as you will all see off the screen. So this standard follows on very closely from the level two standard which is structure bonding and energy changes and so I'm going to be referring to a lot of the level two content as I go through and start the this topic. Okay so this standard involves a bunch of ideas around particles and substances. So one of the first things we're going to do and that's what we're going to look at today is about electron configuration and the truth about electron configuration as we know it so far. We're also going to look at periodic trends in ionization energy, atomic radii, ionic radii and electronegativity. We're going to look at how we compare atomic and ionic radii. We are going to consider Lewis diagrams and shapes for molecules with up to six pairs of electrons around the central atom. We're going to look at the polarity of all those different molecules and we're going to look at a range of different types of bonding including different types of intermolecular bonding which is a bit of a change from year 12. We are going to look at how different types of intermolecular bonding affect physical properties in particular melting and boiling points and we are going to look at a range of thermochemical calculations so developing from what we did last year and moving forward. So what I'm going to look at today is electron configuration. If you will remember when you were in year 9 or year 10 your teacher will have told you that electrons live in orbitals and those orbitals there's two electrons in the first orbital and eight electrons in the second orbital and eight electrons in the third orbital and we kind of get up to calcium where we tell you that there's two electrons in the next orbital but that's about as far as we go. And if you were lucky and you had a chemistry teacher who was honest with you at that stage, they will have told you that this was an oversimplification. And so what we're going to look at today is the detailed example. So this is the current state of knowledge regarding electron configuration. I'm not going to try and pretend that this is the truth. It is just the truth as we know it at the moment. And so what we know at the moment is that we find electrons in orbitals. We can call them orbitals, we can call them energy levels. They are not the picture that you've probably had in your head for the last five years of electrons zooming around and around and around a nucleus like planets orbiting the sun. Okay, these orbitals or energy levels or shells, I've heard all those terms used and they are all fine, are regions of probability. Okay, they are not a particular track that an electron is going to follow but it is a region of probability where you will be most likely to find that electron. Now energy levels increase the further the orbitals are from the nucleus. Now different orbitals or suborbitals have different shapes so we have energy levels which is probably what you think of as orbitals to an extent, within those energy levels or shells there are a number of orbitals or subshells of different shapes. So the electrons will fit two to an, um, two to an orbital or a subshell. So um, some energy levels may have up to 17 about 14 different, um, 14 or 15 different suborbitals. Now electrons will always fill into the orbitals from the lowest energy, which is the one that's closest to the nucleus first. Okay, so this is really confusing, I understand this, but we're just going to go through this, hopefully it will become clear as we get through. So we have these different letters which we use to describe the orbitals. Now they are given a letter S, P, D or F 
if orbitals are beyond the scope of what you need to know for this standard. Um, if you're really interested, then by all means you can check out other tutorials on the web which get into f orbitals. So s orbitals are spherical and there are two electrons in each of those s orbitals. p orbitals are sort of dumbbell shaped or double lobed and there are three p orbitals at each energy level. So that gives us a total of six electrons in each set of p orbitals. And we have d orbitals of which there are five at each energy level. I should say that we don't get any p or d orbitals in the first energy level and we don't get any d orbitals in the second energy level. d orbitals look really weird. Okay, so very quickly, s orbitals, spherical shaped. p orbitals, kind of these weird dumbbell shapes, and d orbitals, really, really bizarre looking shapes. Okay, now that still doesn't really help you visualize it, so what I'd like to do is show you an animation that hopefully will make a little bit more sense of how these orbitals kind of overlap and overlay each other. Okay, so this animation is on YouTube, so um, feel free to search it up. All you need to look for is animations for filling SPD orbitals. Um, I'm not going to claim that I created this myself because I certainly did not. I'm not that talented. So what you can visualize is a three-dimensional space and the sort of center point of the cross here is where the nucleus is going to be found. Okay, the nucleus is really, really tiny. Just keep that in mind. So as we operate, as the simulation runs, you can see how it goes. So the first orbital is the 1s orbital. And as you can see, it is spherical, it is quite small, and it is quite close to the nucleus. Then we get the 2s orbital, which is also spherical, but a little larger. So these are regions of probabilities. There will be two electrons in this zone. We have the 2p orbitals, and there are three of them, one running in each plane. Okay, so the x plane, the y plane, and the z plane. Now remember, two electrons in each one of these spaces. You can see they overlap. But they're regions of probability. It's not an individual track. So then we get our 3s orbital. Bigger again. And our 3p orbitals. Bigger again. So mostly your electrons are going to be found around the edges of these orbitals. But they're regions of probability. So they could be anywhere within the zone. So another 3p orbital. And yet another 3p orbital. Then we have our 4s orbital. You can see now it's really starting to get quite large. Now, the funny thing is after our 3s orbital, we get 4s orbital, we get to the 3d. And that's where we get these really bizarre and ugly looking shapes. But what I want you to see is that they are bigger. Always further away from the nucleus. These weird shapes, they interlock, they overlap but they all occupy a slightly different space. That's the most important thing. They occupy slightly different spaces. So these two electrons could be anywhere within this given zone. Okay. After the 3D orbitals, we then can stick 4P orbitals and 5S orbitals and so on and so forth. And it just goes on and on and on. But the most important thing, and what I really want you to see here, is that the bigger the number, the further away from the nucleus it becomes. And as it does so, what we're getting is overlapping regions of probability. So once upon a time, you will have learnt that the electron configuration of sodium is 281. Two electrons in the first orbital, eight electrons in the second orbital, one electron in the third orbital. What we're going to look at right now 
is the updated electron configuration for sodium. And if you look closely, you can see that there are some similarities. Okay? Okay, so if you look here, what you can see is that the electron configuration for sodium starts off with 1s2. What that means is that in the first shell, there is an s orbital, and that s orbital contains two electrons. This is just the same as your two electrons in your first orbital. Okay. You can then see that we have 2s2 and 2p6. That means in the second s orbital, second energy shell, s orbital, there are two electrons. And in the second energy shell, p orbitals, there are a total of six electrons. This is equivalent to your the eight part of your 281. Okay, so you've got your 1s2, that's your 2 here. The 2s2 and the 2p6, they add up to a total of 8 electrons. That's your second energy shell. And finally, you have 3s1, which is the final electron. So there's one electron in the 3s orbital. It's in the third energy shell. It's an s orbital. So the notation looks complicated, but actually it's just an elaboration of what you already know. Now the periodic table is actually your greatest friend here. So if you think about the periodic table, a periodic table has these rows which we call periods. Okay, There are seven of them as you go down the periodic table and these equate to the seven energy shells of electron orbitals. And if we look at a periodic table, it's arranged in kind of chunks left to right. And each of these relates to an orbital type. Now let me show you what I mean. Okay, so if we look at the periodic table, the left hand side is got chunks of twos and whenever if we've got an atom on the left hand side then those s orbitals will be the outermost electrons on the other side here we have groups of six a chunk of six atoms and these ones make up our p block by that i mean that an atom that is in this part of the periodic table will have its outermost electrons in p orbitals. In the middle of the periodic table here, we have our d block orbitals, our transition metals. And that means that anything that's in there, its outermost electrons are going to be in d orbitals. Finally, down the bottom, which you do not need to worry about, are your f's. Now you can also have a look, if you look over here, you can see these ones are actually labelled. So you can almost kind of think it through, I suppose. Um, so we go hydrogen to helium, 1s. Then we go lithium, beryllium, boron, carbon, nitrogen, oxygen, fluorine, neon. They're at level 2 ones, the 2s and then 2p. Then sodium, magnesium, aluminium, phosphorus, phosphorus, sulfur, chlorine, argon, and going here. Then, up until now, you've only learnt to calcium, potassium and calcium. So what we're going to do is learn to add on the rest of these, the 3Ds and the 4Ps, all the way up to krypton. And that will be our next lesson.
thanks for your time everyone and I will see you next time.